Now, just a day after being assaulted by Palestinians on the Temple Mount, visiting Saudi blogger Mohammed Saud on Tuesday met with Prime Minister Netanyahu at his office in Jerusalem. And this, as the Israeli premier hosted Saud and five other Arab journalists from all over the Middle East as part of an historic visit. Then, as reported by the Israeli Foreign Ministry, Netanyahu took the opportunity to apologize to Saud for the earlier incident on behalf of all of Israel. And at least three Palestinian suspects were arrested for the harassment. But despite taking the Palestinian abuse somewhat harshly, Saud still stood firm in his convictions, issuing additional support for the Jewish state by even singing a song in Hebrew by poet Leah Goldberg. Then later, the six journalists met with Foreign Minister Katz while scrapping a planned meeting with the Israeli press. But not before Netanyahu reported that the Arab delegation spoke of how, quote, so many in the Arab world want to have peace and normalized ties with Israel, but aren't always free to express it. And indeed, the fallout from the Temple Mount assault seems to back this up, as back in Saudi Arabia and around the Arab world, citizens are divided over what happened. On the one hand, several prominent media personalities in the Arab Gulf supported the attacks against Saud. Jaber al harmi the editor-in-chief of Qatari daily Al-Sharq, for example, said that Saud sullied the mosque with his visit. And Saudi journalist Ali al Ghafayli said Saud is not a real Saudi at all. But on the other hand, many supported Saud, instead decrying the Palestinians for their treatment of Saudi nationals, for their disdain hurled at the Saudi royal family, and most importantly, for their ungratefulness towards Saudi Arabia's consistent support of the Palestinians in the past. Saudi talk show commentator Abdel Rahman al for example, said on Twitter that he was amazed that the Palestinians could raise their children with such, quote, foulness of language, adding, how could they have planted in their minds such black hatred and despise for a country that has dealt with their hunger, spent money on their institutions, and supported their cause?